Alrighty, Facebook, I think I'm back with you guys. Uh, again, I, uh, sorry for the issues there. Um, so the application that I was using um, kept on just crashing. So I'm going back to a different way to see um, see if this will work out. If it crashes again, I don't know. I'm going to have to try to figure it out another time. But um, <clears throat> like I was saying, here at the beach, trying to just relax. Trying to warm up with all that poopy weather we've been having. So um, <clears throat> March is coming. And, um, you know, that's a, my mind, that's a good time for us. Um, at least for me in southern Wisconsin, a lot of my planning can start beginning. Um, I do have a lot of stuff that I do in March. Um, I do plan on growing a lot of stuff. You see, I got a well, if it'll show up, I got a pretty large bag of seeds here that I'm going to be getting ready to go. Um, so a checklist that I normally follow in March is um, I start all of my cold hardy plants. So, you know, that could be anything like your um, your broccoli, your kohlrabi. Uh, I'm going to start uh, my cabbages. I'm going to start that stuff by seed. And then I'm going to move on to my um, warm plants. So my tomatoes, my peppers, if you want to do eggplant, um, anything on that, you want to start about start that stuff roughly in about mid-March. That's typically when I start my seeds. Um, in my area where uh, I've seen a lot of people start their tomato plants or their pepper plants, that are at least in my area. Again, my area is my my, my area is zone five B, um, and I've seen them, you know, in in higher up. Like when I say higher up, I mean farther north, starting their tomato plants and their pepper plants, like in the end of uh, January, early February. I personally think that's way too early to start our plants at that time. Um, <laughs> Actually, a couple of years ago, I was um, actually doing that, and my one tomato plant ended up being almost to my ceiling in my basement here. So um, I, I tend to just wait until mid-March to start planting our peppers, our potatoes, um, or not potato, tomatoes, <laughs> peppers and tomatoes, uh, any eggplant. Um, I typically wait till mid-March to do that. Um, and like I said, your, your cold hardy crops, so your your broccoli, your kohlrabi, your your Brussels sprouts, your cabbages, um, I would actually recommend starting that, you know, probably the first week of March. Um, because those those can those can um, you know get a head start, a couple weeks head start on the other ones, because they can typically go outside before your tomatoes and peppers and those warmer weather uh, plants. So <clears throat> that's that's typically the, the pattern that I follow. Um, I also plant a lot of beans in my garden. I'm not going to start those until probably about two-ish weeks before I put them outside, and that's roughly right, right before that last frost. Um, so uh, another thing that we can start doing in March is pruning. Um, Pruning for your for your fruit trees is very important to do when it's roughly um, an average of 40 degrees for at least 24 hours. And we want to do them about this time of the year because they're still kind of dormant. And we really want to make sure we prune them before it, it gets too hot. But we want to do it before it's too – we don't want to do it when it's too cold because then we'll end up shocking them. Other things that you want to prune to are any any like shade trees or any shrubs that you have. So <clears throat> those uh, I have some shrubs in the front yard. Those um, I don't really know what they are. The uh, they, we actually say it's the pea trees. They smell like pea or the pea bushes. Um, <clears throat> but the the small bushes that we have in our front yard, we're actually gonna I'm actually gonna prune those at the end of March. And a lot of people don't know those actually grow through the winter time. 
So they get most of their growth in the winter time. So I'm going to go ahead and prune my, my shrubs in that probably at the end of March. Um, so, so yeah, pruning, we typically want to wait until our, our temperature has been roughly 40 degrees for at least 24 hours. So if you're in zone five, that's probably going to be mid-March. If you're in zone four, that's probably going to be the end of March. Zone six, you're probably, zone six and seven, you're probably just about there. So, um, so yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a technique. I, I mean, that's going to be kind of the timing and when I would recommend doing pruning. Um, so, um, some, some other things that you can do around, um, outside, if you really need to get outside and start working on stuff, you know, we really can't plant that much stuff right now, unless we have some type of, um, protection or something to go over our plants. Um, <clears throat> I actually have been working on, um, on a, on a, uh, I guess you call it a, a hoop house. Um, I kind of refer to it as my, uh, I refer to it as my greenhouse. Um, but it's really a hoop house. Um, and I've been, you guys, if you guys have been following my, my stories in that, you probably have seen it out there. Um, you've seen me work on it. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a video on how it's looking right now, or kind of, um, something that I just recently did with it. So let me get that popped up here. Um, cut right. Ladies here. and gentlemen. So yeah, that's kind of my, uh, that's kind of a, a uh, I put that on my Instagram as a reel and I thought it was kind of funny to, to show that, but you can see I've been, I've created that, I created that hoop house. And when I created that hoop house, uh, what I did is I kind of, um, I, I, I drilled some rebar or not drilled. I hit some rebar in the ground and then I took some PVC. I took two, two eight foot PVCs and I just hooped them over and I used four of them. Um, and then after I did that, I kind of outlined it with some wood to kind of make it stable. And then I, I got this, um, it's actually called greenhouse plastic. It's, it's six mil, it, meaning that it's a lot thicker and it's, um, it can, it can withstand a couple, couple of years. I think they said it's rated at a four year UV rating. Um, and again, it's also thicker too. So. Um, the other plastic I was using for my other hoop houses was that, I think it was like a four mil or, or maybe something totally different, but it was a lot thinner and it was a lot more brittle and it, and it would, it would cut a lot more. Um, this, when I, when I was pulling that plastic over the hoop house, I mean, it was kind of dragging along some wood and it didn't even, it didn't even cut. So I know it's holding up a lot well, a, a lot better than the other stuff. So, um, so I was really happy when I found that. Um, I ended up finding on Amazon. I think it was about 120 bucks for. I think it was a 20 by 60. I think it was well worth it. So I ended up using that for the hoop house, um, and I also used it on my door. Um, I can show you a door video that I just did here. Door all completed. Put it up. There we go. Got the door completed. Got our temperature up there. Got our camera up. And it did something cool. I moved one of my boxes in here. Just start growing in here shortly. So yeah, with, with that box, um, my plan is hopefully within the next week or two to start throwing some some of my spinach and lettuce out there. I mean, on a, on a daily basis, that box right now has been about about 50 ish 60 ish degrees during the day um it the, the biggest problem i have with with that box and then actually in the hoop house in general is the um is the uh, retaining the heat at nighttime so i got a couple other techniques that i want to work on next year but um i don't need to, i don't need to get in into that right now so um so like I said, in the in that box you saw in that in that video there, 
Uh, I'm going to be planting my lettuce. I'm going to be planting some spinach. Probably just a bunch of greens right now so I can get stuff out there. Um, so that's kind of something I've been working on. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't have time or the energy to build something that big, um, you can build a, a basic cold frame. So a cold frame could just be a um, you know a square box. Uh, what I did is I used I built I built one last year. Um, she ended up building one with my daughter Kinsley. Um, I have a video of that of us building it. Um, it was uh. Kind of interesting i ended up building it in the basement and realized actually i don't remember if it was, i think i was able to get it out of the basement but anyway <clears throat> what i did is i used um i used fence boards and i just stacked them on top of each other um and then i ended up building a, a lid for it out of plastic uh and i put that outside on top of the ground which was actually kind of nice because i was able to use that as a cold frame and that was able to I was able to get a head start on growing my stuff. Um, I actually ended up using that cold frame as well for uh, hardening off my plants. Um, one thing that um, most of us probably already are aware of when we're doing our gardening, when we're starting our seeds inside, we do want to make sure we bring our seeds outside to harden off. Um, typically about two weeks before you put them in the ground. Um, one of the biggest mistakes gardeners make is they don't, properly harden off their plants um uh and and the the biggest the biggest reasons we want to harden off our plants and again you guys probably already know this but we want to acclimate our plants to the outside um we don't want to we don't want to shock them uh, we want them to get used to the wind we want them to get used to the cold or the fluctuation of humidity and all that you know we're growing our stuff inside um you know, it's it's kind of a stable temperature, and we're always watering it at the same time. So uh, we want to make sure we harden off our plants. And that cold frame that I built last year was amazing for that. I was able to prop the little the lid open a little bit when it was nice outside, so it got some wind coming in. Um, I still took my plants inside at nighttime. That's still what we want to do when we are hardening off our plants. We do want to bring our our plants inside at nighttime. But again, we're not probably not going to talk. We're probably not going to need to be doing that until um, um, April anyway, so we don't need to uh, get too far in there, but, um, uh, something that we can start doing outside, um, is our, um, uh, if you do have that frame too, right, we, we can, we can start growing our, our, our broccoli, our kohlrabi, um, cabbages, um, herbs and that, but they ha at that point, like at least where we are, they're going to have to be under some type of protection. So, um, so that, that's kind of their cold frame. Like I said, if you really want to start growing right now, you know, or not, sorry, not right now, if you want to start growing later in the, uh, later in the month outside, we're going to need some type of protection from that. Um, something else that you could do in March too, is start testing your soil. Um, Soil is very important to our to our plants, and we probably all know that. Um, uh, to a point that I know how important they are. I actually just um, put out a video today on Facebook called "The Basics of Soil." It talks about you know multiple different things about your soil, different ways you can um, enhance your soil, um, and ways to test your soil. And that's one of the number one things we need to do in March is test our soil. We need to understand where our um, acidic level is, so our pH. We need to understand how much nitrogen is in there, how much potassium, how much phosphorase is in there. We need to make a. We need to understand how our soil is, so then when it gets, um, uh, so we can actually get our hands in there and we can start applying it to it. We already know what we can put in there. So testing our soil is very important in March to do. And again, if you want to um, kind of get a, a kind of a refresher on you know the basics of soil, go check out my YouTube video. Um, I end up watching it again. <laughs> um, you know, so it, it's just good to keep in our mind here. Um, something else you could do in March is you can actually help your your compost bins. So if you have compost bins outside. Um, I would highly recommend picking up some black plastic and then putting it over the compost bin. Um, and just what, you know, it doesn't have to be that secure, that crazy. Like I, I think last year I ended up 
putting some wooden logs on top of it. And the point to that is as our as our sun is coming out, it's going to hit that black plastic and it's going to actually end up warming up that compost bin and it's start going to get all those microorganisms and that stuff um, to start come back alive. You know, they're always they're always alive, but just get get back uh, back in full spirit and start eating all of our compost in there and producing the, the great stuff that our garden needs. And then uh, once our compost is broken up, it's very important that we get in there with a pitchfork and start um, turning it up. Um, kind of, again, aerate our compost. Um, just get our compost going. I love compost. I mean, <laughs> I'm a huge compost freak. I have two very large compost bins. Um, I, I just think it, it works miracles on our garden. Um, you know, it, it can really help, you know, our, our pH level in our garden. It can help. It's just help everything. And I just love to be able to, you know, eat a banana, put the peel in the bin and, you know, next year use that peel in my garden as dirt. It's just crazy. It's awesome. So, uh, I love compost. So, um, I'm going to talk, I talk a lot about compost. So just sorry, <laughs> but, uh, uh, your, your, yeah, your garden loves it. So I love it. Right. So again, I'd rec highly recommend getting some black plastic and putting it over the top of your compost, let it warm up. And again, go out there and then turning it with a, with a pitchfork. Um, a, another thing you, you can do with that black, black plastic or some type of, um, yeah, I guess probably black plastic of that is put it on top of your garden beds. Now, if you're where, where I'm at, where we just got blasted with about six inches of snow last night, you're going to want to shovel that, that snow away, but then put that black plastic on top of your garden beds. Again, it's going to start, um, warming up, warming them up for you. So, um, you know, other things that you could do is you could start going outside of your house and picking up any debris in your garden, um, start waking it up. Uh, like I talked about, about pruning, start pruning your evergreens. Um, like I said, those evergreens in that typically grow during the winter time. So it's best to prune them um, right at the end of winter going into spring. Um, if you have any ornamental grass outside, you're going to cut that all the way down to the ground right now. Um, and uh, one one tip, really good thing, is if you, if you really need some, um, if you really need some mulch or dirt for your garden, um, I'd highly recommend calling right now and getting a getting an order in. Uh, last year, I ended up ordering six yards of dirt for my garden expansion. And um, when I was talking to the guy on the phone, he's like, "Hey, <laughs> you're lucky you called now because we get really, really booked up as um, soon as that spring comes." So, you know, if you were looking to get mulch or dirt for your garden this year, I'd highly recommend probably in about you know March time start finding some landscapers and that that to call that you want to call and. Uh, get that so um that is kind of your march checklist uh again to recap a lot of our a lot of our plants so like our our tomatoes our peppers eggplants uh that stuff we're really going to want to still wait a little bit longer i know a lot of us really want to want to start getting those going i typically do not start any of that stuff until about until about the mid march um Right now, though, if you want to grow broccoli, kohlrabi, um, Brussels sprouts, um, cabbages, start those right now. Um, there's nothing the matter with those. Those are a cold hardy crop, so you don't have to wait until the end of the frost to put them outside like you have to with your tomatoes and your peppers and your eggplants and that. So starting, um, you know, starting that stuff. Um, it's, it's probably a good time to do it right now if you really want to do some broccoli in that. So, and then, um, you know, you want to, you want to start doing your pruning when you're about 40 degrees. Um, and those could be everything. Those could be if you have blueberry bushes, raspberry bushes, you want to start doing all your pruning on those. Um, one note too about, um, raspberries and, and, um, blackberries and that, um, I, I grow a lot of those here. We're actually going to be expanding and, having a whole, uh, we actually built a bigger, uh, raspberry patch this year. Um, right before winter time, I, I finished building the box and we're going to be moving some of our raspberries that have just sprung up over to there, but raspberries, you want to cut down on the ground all the way when they're, when they're brown or really dark, um, they're dead. 
and they'll actually attract a, a certain grub to them that will actually kill your whole raspberry crop or your whole blackberry crop. So um, green or red canes are good. Any other canes, cut them down, get rid of them as fast as soon as you can. So um, so again, that's kind of our, our March checklist. Um, you know, um, a lot of things that um, – uh, things that I've been doing around my garden, you know, you guys have been, you guys have been following me, you know, you know, I've been building that greenhouse like I showed you. Um, the only, the other thing that I've been doing a lot is planning my garden. Um, I use an application for that. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, and you can, you can use uh, paper. Um, you can use your, just keep it in your head. Um, you have whatever works best for you, but there's an app that I use. It's um. Uh, it's from a company called Grove Edge. Um, I think it's like 30 bucks a year or 20 bucks a year, but you can kind of plot it, plot it out on where you want everything to go by size. And then it will actually give you a plant list by your zip code. And it kind of helps you when to start your stuff inside and start your stuff outside. So um, right now I'm doing a lot of a lot of planning about how I want my garden to be. Uh, where am I going to put stuff? Um, it, it's, it's, it started, it's it, a lot of the gardening stuff right now is really, um, really starting to, to pick up. Um, you know, we really want to figure out what we want to put in our garden, uh, before the big, um, you know, the big seeding outside and about, you know, mid May when that frost is gone. So, um, so that's um I guess that's kind of the, the the stuff that I'm doing. Um upcoming projects that I have around my garden is um I have to actually redo my compost bin. Uh, I have two I have two compost bins and one of them the side has been starting to lean and fall out. Um so I need to I need to redo my compost bins here and and probably eh, it's probably going to be April sometime. Um we are uh we're going on a family vacation at the end of this month. Uh, we're heading down to Florida to Disneyland, and um, which is which is which is awesome, right? I mean, I'm I'm a huge I'm a huge Disney World freak. I love it, but um, you know, when I when I said mid March we want to start planting our our seeds in that, well, <laughs> I'm not going to be home to take care of those seeds and that. So I've, uh, I've been working on a watering system inside my house, an automated watering system in, inside in the basement here. I got a pump that I'm going to have go up to a half inch tube and go into my um, trays and just put some water in there. I'm going to end up putting a camera on there so I can make sure it's not getting too funky. And if it is, I can stop it from watering. Um, so it's a, a couple projects I got going on. Um, you know, who knows? Stuff might change as as the as the weather keeps warming up and I get outside. Um, I do want to redo some of my um, my raised garden bed. Um, I guess you call it walls. Um, I use regular two by fours for that. Um, you guys probably have seen. I'm a I'm an advocate of just using typical two by fours. Um, I don't like using pressure treated. Um, plus two, the regular two by fours that I use are 70% off two by fours that I get from Home Depot. So it's about a buck for a two by four versus eight bucks for a treated two by four. So I just get regular two by fours and I will end up replacing them um, probably every, eh, probably every couple of years, but I'm okay with that with, for the price. So um, that's probably one project that I'm going to be working on too, is redoing the garden bed walls going all the way around. Um, so that's kind of, uh, this is kind of what I had. Um, zone six, am I too late? Um, Keith, I don't, I don't think so. Um, zone six, no, you should be good. I'd go ahead and start planting your stuff right now. I mean, typically, um, before you put stuff in the ground, you're gonna want to um, you're gonna want to take a take a um, a temperature of your ground. Right? We don't want to put plants in the ground if the ground is colder than 50 degrees. 
So I don't know what your average temperature has been out there, uh, but I don't think zone six is too late right now. Um, I would say if if you were mid March and you haven't hadn't started um, your seeds, then it might be too late. But no, I think right now if you can get them going within the next week, I think you'll be good. But I think I uh, appreciate that question. Um, so I think that's all I had today. Um, if anybody has any questions, no, you're pro no problem, Keith. I appreciate that question, man. Um, yeah, I think you'll be fine with zone six, man. But, uh, let me know how, let me know how they turn out. Should, um, uh, what, what do you got growing? Uh, you probably got to got, probably got some what tomatoes and peppers and that. So it'd be interesting to see what you got growing there. Um, I think that's about it, guys. Uh, if, uh, appreciate everybody uh, joining this uh, this garden talk. Um, I do want to do more of these. I'm gonna try to try to structure them a little bit better. Um, if you guys got any questions or got any topics that you want me to cover on these garden talks, please uh, shoot them my way. Um, but otherwise, thanks again for for joining me. And that's right, keep growing, and I'll talk to you later.